I am Anthony Farrell, the CEO of Suave Apparel, and you are watching the innovation segment of Ion Business. Welcome to Eye on Business. I'm Shan Steinmark and we are going through our innovation segment where we look at innovative companies, innovative people, and their innovative products. And tonight we have with us Anthony Ferraro. Anthony, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Shan. First of all, let's start off with just tell us a little bit about uh, Suave and uh, how you got started. Okay, great. Well, Suave is the underpeel for the overachiever, what we like to call it. And the idea um, was came about when we wanted to create um, a boxer brief underwear that men could wear all day, every day, from work or school into the uh, gym. And the original idea had started from the personal pain of <laughs> not being satisfied with the current products we have out now. And I know it sounds a little bit crazy, but we've you know turned this this idea into a business, and it's you know really exciting to see the reaction of what people think about us. So. Well, we love having crazy entrepreneurs on the show. That's oh, the yeah. whole idea. Yeah, so well, you definitely now definitely. tell me about the background of where it got started and so okay. forth, because you have an interesting story there yeah, as well. Absolutely. Um, well, like I said, the idea came from a pain, and the only reason I say that is because um, it was the personal experience yep. of recognizing that the products um, themselves that were that were out in the market were just kind of unsatisfactory in, in my eyes and in our, our partners' eyes as we started the company. It was not only the lack of the comfort and functionality is something that we focus on in our products, but it was the brand image. What was really um, what we wanted to um, really, really install uh, install in this industry as okay. far as the undergarment industry. And it got started at Chapman University. Okay. Um, for the first four months of our business, we were young. We thought we had known it all, and, and <laughs> um, started manufacturing our products in China just because we had the idea. And then when we started working with the Chapman Incubator program, things really started to. Um, turn around for us and uh, we've been in the Chapman Incubator ever since and um, won a few business plan competitions which was awesome at the internal business plan competition and the Syracuse competition as well so now what did you do different that enabled you to win those because you know, you know <laughs> hundreds of people enter those contests and almost nobody wins them so well, <laughs> what was your secret the, the secret was the line uh, the Victoria's Secret for men and anytime <laughs> anytime uh, you know that line was said in front of an audience you know the first time I actually pitched that idea I got such an from the eyes from the audience, <laughs> I actually paused and stopped because I was so shocked. And okay. um, ever since then, uh, you know, we, we talked about pushing the product and the, the brand image and creating the business with inside um, that idea and uh, just was attractive. And we had a lot of energy and passion. So Now, if somebody was comparing your product to what they find on the shelf today, if they go to, you know, a department store, what, right. what would be different about your product? Um, I'd say what's different about our product is first the technology that we've put into our product. Okay. Um, we have implemented Outlast uh, technology, which is actually a NASA patent fabric that reacts with okay. your body temperature. So, you know, simply stated, when you're, you're feeling hot, if you're in exercise, it'll naturally cool you down and vice versa. If you're okay. in cold weather, it'll heat you up. Um, and then also, uh, the big differentiator that we like to talk about is the way that we market our product. You will go to, you know, this, this product's comparable to a lot of the Nordstrom brands, Calvin okay. Klein, Armani. Um, but you know, you go into those stores and you see the packaging and the way it's displayed. And for us, as, as male consumers, we felt that it was a little bit uncomfortable. So what we're um, doing for our product and our consumers, we're changing the experience that um, males have shopping for this product. Or, you know, it's actually uh, t you know, the stat is 80% of women, you know, whether it's a mother, whether it's a girlfriend or wife, buy these products for the men. So we're trying to change okay. that experience with with buying these uh, undergarment products. So I want to come back to the marketing, but first take me back to the technology part again. So yeah. how did you connect with this particular fabric or okay. how did you yeah. discover it? Well, well, early when we were starting this company, you know, we really wanted to innovate with the, the, the product. So when we started, uh, you know, working with China, we were kind of limited ourselves because we didn't, we weren't able to really develop the product like we wanted. And once okay. we had met with the incubator program and started working with downtown uh, Los Angeles manufacturers and suppliers, we were able to kind of take our products, have it in our hand, and say, what do we want to change about this? How can we innovate? And our fabric supplier, fortunately, was the first ones to um, l uh, let tell us about the Outlast technology. And right okay. when we had um, heard about that, um, that, that technology, we wanted to implement it into 
our fabrics. And ever since then, we've been looking down the road on our future okay. lines, and we look to, you know, do many different things with our with our uh, with our undergarment. So this is NASA technology. NASA though, technology. Yes. NASA yes. technology. Yes. Okay. Yes. So demonstrate for your for your customer, yeah. our audience out there, what what customers will see when they. Yeah, absolutely. So along with the Outlast technology, it's not something that you can see. It's actually okay. just something that you're going to feel when you're wearing the product. But we also have the Suave Slip Innovation, which <laughs> okay. is a tight okay. slip pocket. Um, the first okay. use, uh, what we like to um, talk about it, is for when you're working out in the gym. Yeah. Uh, you know, your phone, you put it in your pocket, it's waving around, or you know, it gets, uh, you know, bangs against, you know, other machines. And we wanted to put a uh, slip pocket in our product okay. that okay. you know wasn't going to, you know, move around. It was going to stay tight, nice and tight to the hip. And ever since you know we put it into our underwear, we were kind of. <laughs> Not sure how we were going to hear the response, but, you know, the customers really okay, love it after okay. selling this. So when you look at the product, it's not obvious to you that it's NASA technology. <laughs> uh, well, we're, we're able to uh, market the, te the NASA technology okay. on our packaging. So, okay, they'll, so it's all they'll in the packaging. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. and as well as the tags as well. So. Okay, so let's go back to that marketing thing. You said, what was the statistic? 80% of men's underwear is bought by the... By the female consumer, yeah. The, the wife, girlfriend, or mother. I mean, we'll think about it the naturally. Mother. Now I that, mean, okay, that's... It yeah. takes us back, right? Yeah, abso no, absolutely. And, <laughs> okay. and and before I started this, before I started this uh, the, this brand with my partners, uh, my mother was buying my underwear at Target, and it was Hanes brand. And uh, okay. you know that was that was. I think we've all been there, right? Yeah, because yeah, because you know, and and when we when we started this company, like you know, men don't really care about their underwear. They don't they, they don't like to shop, and you know they don't they don't like to to you know really care about the products they're wearing. And well, we, all, I, what I remember is there weren't choices. You know, there was tidy whiteies and tidy whiteies, right. and that you know, I guess you could go boxers or briefs, right? Right. No. And absolutely. that was about it. And it's like, hey, why spend a lot of time on this? Yeah. But what you're saying is we all have to get a little more sophisticated about it, right? Yeah, a little bit more sophisticated. And what we like to preach is the overachiever lifestyle and everything that you do. Okay. Um, we want you to do to your best ability. From okay. you know the moment you wake up, the first product that you put on, which is a men's boxer brief, you want okay. it to be the highest quality. So when you, you, you carry your, you know, you put on your pants and your shoes after that, and you carry and you go into your job, whether you're a school teacher, you're a fireman, you know, your construction worker, you know, everything you do, you we want to you know to make it a point to, you know, do you have your best ability, and you know we want it to be the first reminder, first thing in the morning that you're starting with Suave, and and that's why we're putting a lot of value into this product, okay. not only the product itself, but the brand. So you've got this interesting combination, I guess, of you're trying to market superior technology, but also a different image, as mm -hmm. I understand it. So how did you guys come up with that? Well, it, it's the, uh, the key line that, that, um, that really in, it sparks the investor crowd and everybody you know, that watches okay. this pitch. It's the Victoria's Secret for Men was the idea. And they did three things um, that we've researched very, very well, and one is they've developed a very, very high-quality product. Okay. Um, the second thing is they, they developed a very respected brand image, okay. um, and, and the third thing was changing the consumer experience with um, having their own retail chain stores um, around the nation, uh, 100 or 1,040 uh, retails internationally wide. So um, that's, that was part of the, the, the goal in building that brand to match the status of the women's you know, the undergarment company that's respected, they have a high quality product, they sell it in their, their own retail stores, they're not in Nordstrom's, they're not in racks next to other companies. Um, and that's what we wanted to build for Suave. It, and we've changed from the Victoria's Secret for men to we want to instill the Victoria's Secret effect and have that effect of okay. the high quality product, the respected brand image, and hopefully um, open our own retail chains or find our, our way of distribution that separates us from the other brands. Well, it seems like you're doing that and more because if uh, you're obviously appealing to the fashion side, but you're also appealing to the technology side. And, the, and what's intriguing is this concept that when you're too hot, the underwear help you cool down. Mm -hmm. When you're too cool, it helps you feel warmer. Mm -hmm. And so that seems like a pretty practical pitch that you can make to your audience, is that oh, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, we just recently launched our Kickstarter, and that's actually one of the, um, the 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 details in the video that is really catching the eye of our the, the consumer on Kickstarter is the NASA technology, and um, it's actually going to be a very um, popular um, implementation to fabrics now is wearable technologies, okay. and what is your okay. product doing for gotcha. you? Okay. So. Tell me about what stage you're in, because you just mentioned Kickstarter, but uh, when did you start? Uh, what were the sort of the tough steps along the way, and now you're getting, you're starting okay, great. to well, raise money, I, I understand. Mm -hmm. Well, about, you know, four years ago was my freshman year of college, where 
Um, I kind of had the idea of the Victoria's Secret for a minute. I didn't touch it. Um, I only had the idea and I talked about it with my peers. And when I had first mentioned it to a, uh, a Finnish student at Chapman, his name is Jerry Luten, and he comes from Scandinavia um, on a visa as an international student. I tell, you know, Jerry is very business minded, and I, you know, we just got on a conversation where we were talking about this idea, and I said, Jerry, I have this underwear idea. What do you think about it? And <laughs> he was like, Anth. He calls, you know, he, he says A N T H. He calls Anth. That's a great idea. In, in Scandinavia, everybody cares about their underwear. We, we need to get this business started because <laughs> Americans don't care about their underwear. They wear terrible whitey tighties still to this day, and there's no respect for the brand. So let's build it together. And that was November of 2011, and January of 2012 is when we officially okay. um, you know, started the LLC um, of Suave Apparel. And ever since then, um, we've been building. So it's just been about a year and seven, eight months now. Now you keep saying we. Tell me about your team, because yeah. my understanding is your team's a little different than some of the teams we've oh, seen yeah, at Chapman, right? Yeah. And that, yeah, absolutely. And that was one of the the really key motivators was getting so much involvement from so many of my peers that okay. were that wanted to get involved on the team and believed in the brand and the product. Yeah. And um, at one point, there was actually 18 of us working um, yeah. full time last semester. There was four partners, and the rest were were interns that we actually gave away business internship credit through Chapman University, which okay. was awesome. So. Um, there's there's other partners such as Jerry and Nevin and Harris Kareem okay. um, who work on operations and marketing in, in the company but um, the other rest of the team they're very much so a part of what we do and uh, we're, we're really uh, you know me, me personally as far as the founder and CEO of this company I really am proud of the team and everything that we've done to really carry us this far because it's been a very it's been a joint effort and I'm very passionate about that and you know recognizing their success and their so I'm going to dig a little deeper there you uh you are obviously, a, just at first glance, quite a leader, but you've had to hold this team together. I won't even say through thick and thin, because it's mostly been thin so far, right? I mean, oh, you know, yeah. there's been a few yeah. contests where maybe you got a prize or something, but, yeah. but you're basically, this is on the promise of future, you know, success. But yeah. how have you held that team together for so long? And, and it's, it's a large team. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know, and it really wasn't easy. And I, there was plenty of times I had to tell myself, even when it was in the very thin stages when you had the thought in your mind is, hey, is this really what we want to dedicate all of our time to because we do spend so much time and our own money into this business. And, you know, it, it was really being the one to push the passion of the brand and the product even when we were in our lowest stages. You know, it was always about the end result, not the now. And, okay. you know, if there was something that we were ever doing wrong, you know, it was just talking to the team and telling them, you know what, we, we just need to get better. We need to learn and we need to, you know, move on from, you know, I don't necessarily like to call it failures if it's an obstacle. Yeah, sure. Nothing, no, no obstacle is too high for us, and that's why we like to get involved in the incubator program because, you know, okay. Okay. starting an underwear fashion company, we wanted to really legitimize ourselves. And okay. getting involved in the incubator and getting recognized at the Chapman University business plan competition and doing things like that um, really encouraged the team to keep going with the process and, and, okay. and keep going with the journey. So. Now, you mentioned a couple of challenges and maybe some pivots. I mean, can you tell us what those were, what were the most significant ones? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, from when we had this idea in January, um, I remember posting on social media everywhere, Suave is going to be launching April 2012. And uh, we actually didn't even end up releasing our first product until May of 2013. So, <laughs> okay. so I can tell you, with the product itself and developing, um, you know, everybody says apparel, it's tough to get into because you know, everybody can go into a, a, a screen printer and get a blank t-shirt, you know, yep, print yep, the t-shirt yep, yep. on. And that's not the case with cut and sew product, um, like, our, like our undergarment. We actually have to develop the patterns and take it to a sampler. The sampler has to redo the samples okay. three or four yeah. times before we can take it to the manufacturer. And the first time that we had sent our, you know, what we like to call a tech pack, but it was nowhere where it needed to be back in January of 2012, sent it to China to about six different manufacturers. We're really excited about what we had coming in. We thought we were going to get ready for our launch in April. And I'm not even kidding you, the very first manufacturer sent back a, a, a product that was a see-through fabric. And I'm not even kidding you, you could go like this and see it see-through. It had a Calvin Klein waistband on it. And they said we, we couldn't really figure out. Other than that, it was perfect. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know. maybe for a different audience. Yeah. I mean, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah, but it was definitely not what we were going for. And the reason why it took such a long time is because, you know, we had to learn that, you know, if we really wanted to come up with the most cutting-edge yeah. product and differentiate ourselves in the market, that, you know, we were going to have to have the highest quality product. So first with, you know, going through different manufacturers and, okay. and working with, you know, the startup stage with very low capital and really trying to keep mm -hmm. ourselves alive, um, it was developing the product and, you know, really building the brand was something that was um, at the early stage, 
a little bit of a question to us because we really didn't know what it took. But um, you know, as we got older, um, we got you know very much so matured as as young entrepreneurs and as and, and personally that uh, you know any obstacle that we come to now we can over overcome okay. just a lot quicker just because of you know the the, the, the obstacles that we had in the past. Okay. So. so tell me a little bit about how did Chapman play a role in this? I mean, you mentioned it several times, but how did they help you when you got stuck and things like that? Oh well. Absolutely. Um, you know, the, I remember sitting in Richard Sudek's office, okay. um, who's the founder of our the Chapman uh, Leatherby Entrepreneurship Center. Um, I, I, I pitched our business, our underwear business, to him, and you know, we usually get the the normal reaction, which is the <laughs> you want to do what? And then after, uh, you know, we we started, you know, n uh, you know, really convincing him the fact that you know it wasn't it's really crazy. It was something that we really were. Oh, passionate it might be about. crazy, but go ahead. Yeah, anyway, it, might be, right? it might be a little bit crazy, but there's a business idea yep, yep. behind it, and. Uh, Right when we first got involved with the Chapman Incubator Program, we were just able to learn from so many different mentors and advisors, okay, and, okay. And, and that was a chance for us to really uh, gain some experience okay. through learning and just, you know, expressing our ideas and learning that, you know, maybe not take this approach, you know, change up your, yeah, your, your plan and start um, in a new direction. And our team was, you know, very much so passionate about our idea, but we were, we were able to mold ourselves into, you know, what was right. And, you know, we knew if we wanted to start this business especially, uh, we needed to know everything about, the, you know, about it. So um, when we first started meeting with Chapman, a um, number of mentors okay. in, in yeah. this space, such as retail and marketing and um, lawyer, our lo we found okay. our lawyers through Chapman, and just a number of ways in winning the internal business plan competition. And it was more than, you know, not, not even just the knowledge, it was the motivation that they gave us to keep going. And okay. even though at, yeah. at first they, they really kind of questioned what yeah, we were yeah. going to do with it, they recognized how passionate we were. And any time that there was ever the slightest doubt um, in our minds, they said, keep going, you guys are here for a reason. Okay. And it was a lot of motivation. So. so tell me about what were the most, I don't know what you call these challenges, the, the, the strongest challenges that were presented to you or the most discouraging things that were said to you, like, you know, don't even try this, get out of the business, whatever. Oh, yeah. what, what, what kind of things were said to you along the way? Well, you know, not, aside from the product and the kind of problems that we had in the beginning, it, it was pitching the business and, okay. Okay. and being able to get that respect. Myself being uh, the pitchman who's, who's okay. done most of the competitions, I was very passionate about our idea and I wanted to represent our team really well. Yeah, so. Yeah. So when we get before in front of a stage and you're going to talk about underwear, you know, you had to block the, the, <laughs> the, the responses that you were going to get in your mind because we knew that there was going to be a lot of negativity, especially in the investment group who is, you know, aged and, and, and experienced uh, businessmen who s have sold tech products. And Whose underwear may yeah. not be yeah, uh, quite and, up to par. Yeah, right? and <laughs> still worn the same underwear since they were as, as a kid, which most of them have told us. Um, and, and, you know, it, fortunately for us, we, have, we got a lot of great responses, especially okay. when we did our pitches. But... You know, there was also other angel investors that said this product's never going to work. Yep, um, yep. You know, you're going into a crowded market. You know how hard it is to get a retail brand. You want to have stores. You know how much overhead costs the stores have. You want to, you know, compete with Hanes. Yep, you yep, know, yep. It, you heard it, you know, a number of different things of why we shouldn't, you know, necessarily continue this. But in our eyes, it was, oh, you, you know, overhead's going to be a problem for stores. Well, how can we find out a way? Maybe through subscription yep, monthly yep, yep. services. So it was... You know, just taking in everything and just learning from everything, learning okay, from what okay. everybody had to say because, you know, we knew we had to change if there was anything that anybody had to say bad about or, you know, critique what we were doing. Yep, yep. So. Well, it sounds like you survived a lot of the, the assault that, you know, we as investors or cr critics or mentors or whatever can send your way. But when you started off in life, did you think, I I'm going to grow up and be an entrepreneur or what? How did you get even in this direction? Well, you know, it's, it's funny because I, I really never thought about starting my own business until okay. about four months before I started Suave because okay. I was an avid athlete. I was a football player. I actually okay. played two seasons at Chapman University, okay. and I was all about, you know, lifting in the weight room and, and working hard and being a leader on the team. I was very always passionate about being a leader on my team, which is, you know, a lot of the reason why I feel – have been somewhat successful in yeah, leading this yeah. in, in our yeah. team because there's a lot of the same mentality and the same teamwork and, and, and the same atmosphere as far as within okay. a business okay. and even and even coming up to competition you know being, have that having that very competitive attitude right, right. from the, from the sports arena um, had kind of molded my 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 first initial um, you know characteristics as far as being an entrepreneur okay. and I re and I and I recognized I wanted to be an entrepreneur when I 
when I stepped into the incubator space and I really saw w what it what it really took and and how you know the 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 other advisors and mentors really yeah. you know shed the light on me and I really got so inspired just to I want to be a business owner and I want to yeah. do crazy things that no so people think are impossible because yeah. the second that you you know you prove them wrong it's it's you know you find that success that's well a lot of people talk about passion and say you know our entrepreneurs have to have passion and so forth and I think sometimes it gets mistranslated but for you, it's very close to drive is what I'm hearing, is mm -hmm. that, you know, it's like, okay, I've been a leader before, I'm going to be a leader now, and mm -hmm. we're going to, you know, take into account all these criticisms, but we're going to keep going no matter what. Mm -hmm. Did that come from, you know, mom and dad? Was that instilled in you during your Chapman stay? I mean, it sounds like it's been with you a while, right? Yeah, you, you know, I, I, I could say that it's definitely, I've always had somewhat of an attitude, and I definitely okay. um, thank my parents for supporting me through absolutely everything okay, in my life. Good. and. Um, you know, my father was the one who was challenging me and, and telling me to go <laughs> harder and, and saying, you know, there's, you might have this down, but there's also something that you got to look over here. And, okay, okay. and that, you know, made me really want to just prove, you know, prove to my dad, I can do it, I can do it. And my mother, you know, she's the, 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 an angel in my eyes as far as she was the one who picked me up when I was ever down or, okay. you know, would, would really help me out. So I was fortunate in that way, but definitely sports. And, um, you know, I've always had a, just a passion for okay. For being a leader and um, doing, you know, having integrity and and really leaving a, a positive influence on other people's lives because I've always been a firm believer if you, you know, you 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 are morally you know sound and, and your yeah. values are, yeah. are correct and you leave that impression on others, you know, it, it, it could stick to them and and you know we'll have a better world around us. So I was always very very passionate about being a leader and. Okay. and okay. You know, I always, I always trust, you know, I like, to, I like to trust myself that others will trust me and we can all, you know, really yeah, trust yeah. each other and that's what it really, you know, when it comes down to the business and the teams, it's really important that you have that trust. Well, I'm impressed with how you have led and uh, I think Thank that's you. one of the reasons you're here on the show today is you know, I've seen a lot of different teams, you know, come and go, frankly, and Anthony Ferraro keeps showing up is what <laughs> I've noticed is because yeah. I was probably one of the doubters in the beginning, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, Anthony wins a contest, and then Anthony shows up another semester, and then Anthony's team keeps growing, and then you're learning and finding out different ways to market your product. So it's very impressive. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Can you share with our audience what you see next for Suave? Well, uh, like I was saying, mentioned earlier, Suave is on Kickstarter right now, and we are okay. on Kickstarter for the next 36 days. Okay. Um, and after K Kickstarter was a, a, a way to prove to... Um, uh, not only our, our audience and our early adopting customers that you know yep. we, we, yep. we have a great product and we want to expand it, but it was also to the investing community because we've gotten in front of like at the few business plan competitions we've been okay. involved in. You know, we know that there's money around us, and it was the question: Well, how many sales do you have? How many people <laughs> okay. you know really want to buy this product? Who yep. likes the brand? And yep. you know, Kickstarter is our, our way to validate our product. So yep. once we validate our product with a successful Kickstarter campaign. We look to um, go into a few different routes of distribution, okay. one being okay. the boutique retail store um, that we already have a few buyers that are, that are really interested in having our product in their stores. Okay. Okay. But then also uh, we have a few um, different uh, gyms that are interested in ah, having okay. our, okay. our uh, product in their store because we offer a luxury and a performance product. Okay. So we're able to pull, place two products in either the same place or different areas and then also um, sell on, on our online website, but then also build the brand through different events and activities that we want to get involved in, in sports okay. and fashion and music and, and other areas of the lifestyle. Okay, now you mentioned your website. How can people get in touch with you or find out more about Suave? They can go to our website, which is www.suaveapparel.com, and they can also reach us on our Facebook, which is um, facebook.com slash suaveapparel, and um, also uh, is our Kickstarter website, okay. Uh, and okay. um, you can research Suave on Kickstarter. So. Okay. Well, Anthony, it's been a real pleasure having you here. I really want thank to you, thank sir. you for coming in. No, really appreciate it. And uh, good luck with everything on Suave. Thank you. And this has been Ion Business. Uh, thank you for watching our innovation segment.